today we're sketching a fountain and hopefully you guys enjoy the ride. It's your girl Becky and it is a drizzly rainy here in Hong Kong. I'm having trouble finding a dry surface for me to sit down on. So what I decided to do is I decided to park myself over there. So there is my bags and all that and it is under a bus stop. And as you can see, there's like a little tiny dry patch. So that is where I am going to be for today. Today we are sketching a fountain. Having sketched a couple of fountains for a plain April, I now know that this is going to be the purest white of the sketch. And therefore, what I need to do is make sure that everything around it, so these trees and everything, are dark. And that is going to be our focus for today, is to get the brightest brights on these uh, whites of the water right here, and also the reflections down here. I am going to be sketching a little bit away from the fountain just because I need to cover myself up and ensure that I'm dry and also I don't really want any unwanted splashes or blotches sorry splashes and blotches splotches splotches on my drawing and it's because you know when sometimes those effects are nice but this one I kind of want it to be quite clean because I want the white around the fountain to be the crisp areas so I'm here today because I just finished my Mandarin class and I have about two hours to kill before I go to my workout class so what better time to sketch than now and I just wanted to record this rainy day before it gets too hot because Hong Kong summer is ooh, very brutal. Today I am going to start with my weapons of choice which is my moleskin book and my pencil. And we are going to start that to lay in the base of the fountain and we are going to proceed with watercolor in a bit. This sketching process is going to take less than a minute so I'm just going to quickly talk through what I'm doing here. First I'm laying in the fountain shape and I know I know it's supposed to be white so I'm trying to lay it in really lightly and then I'm laying in the front uh, bricks that or the borders of the fountain both in the front and in the back and then we move into laying in some of the bushes I just want to have an approximation of where everything is going to be and I just want to make sure that the fountain is right in the center so this is always the complicated bit is because you think that you want the focus point to be the fountain so you try to put it in the center but in reality it's always sort of shifted a little bit to the bottom or to the top so figuring out the placement of all of this before I start laying in down the color is always really 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 helpful <laughs> The best part about having paper that can handle a lot of water is that I can do this. I can wet the page with clear water at the very beginning and then I can let all of these colors sort of bleed into each other into having really really soft edges. And here I contemplated for a little bit on whether or not I should leave the white space in the middle and preserve the highlights. But then I decided that it would be actually really hard and get in the way of all my blending. So I just decided to go ahead and just blend all the colors. So I'm picking out the reds at the back, the greens at the back, trying to get some of the darker greens even for the trees as well. And just trying to slowly build up that color profile in the background so I know that you have to layer watercolor slowly you try to do it in stages and it does require a lot of patience but a key thing that I need to remember in order to make this fountain really pop is I need the background to be really dark so the darker the background the more the white is going to pop on this page it doesn't mean that the whole background needs to be dark 
just if I focus on that one area where the fountain really is and just that sort of circular broad area even if the surrounding areas are not as dark but if the white is on top like the darkest part of the page then that will stand out the most <music> I'm trying to make use of the mixes that I have, put in similar colors into every area of the page as much as possible. And I am just slowly building in the colors, laying down the colors, laying down the shapes, and also try to get in the sky as well because I want everything to have sort of a color profile to it. colors for the water is always really fun um, not just because it's super meta with water and watercolor which means that you can kind of get watery effects with watercolor watery effects with watercolor really easily but also because the the shape and the characteristics of watercolor really make for really good water effects i don't know what i'm saying but basically watercolor good for water shapes and what i'm doing here is i first laid down clear water because I wanted some soft edges and I wanted some areas, especially the center where the fountain is going to spout from, I need it to be white because it takes the reflection of the water which is bright white. I'm firstly putting in some light blues and sort of streaking it across in some horizontal motion because if you look closely at the water, this is where or that is how the water moves. I do always have to work in stages when it comes to watercolor. So now while I'm waiting for the water area to dry, and also because there is a slight drying shift with watercolor, when you lay down the color, it always looks really dark. And then when it dries, because the water evaporates and there's less light reflecting on the water, then the color becomes a lot more light and faded. And therefore it's always really important for you to let it dry and then evaluate what you need to do afterwards. So I decided to move to the background first while waiting for the front to dry. And I'm really 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 trying to darken up the bits around the fountain especially. I am putting in a lot more color so when I get my mix, I lay it in the center first before laying it on the side. Just trying to build that layer, build in that shade in order for the fountain to pop. Because I really need to remember that the darker it is, the brighter the fountain is going to be. And then I realized that actually I need the dark bits to be in the water at the back of the fountain as well in order for that white to pop there, not just white. So I'm coming back in, I'm trying not to fill in too much of the white, but definitely the surrounding areas. <music> Now it looks like we have a little guest. Hello. Hi. Can I have a look? Yeah, sure. Nice to meet you. This is me. Oh. That's why I, I stopped to have a look. <laughs> I, I do this. That's beautiful. Yeah, yeah thank you. The, the little watercolors of uh, yeah. Hong Kong. Yeah, baby steps compared to you now. <laughs> no, no. Gotta start somewhere. Gotta start okay. somewhere. Nice, nice seeing you. Nice seeing you. Bye. Thanks for dropping by. It was so sweet of him to drop by and because I don't know a lot of watercolor artists here in Hong Kong, it is really nice to make some new friends. And I actually did get in touch with him um, later in that day. And we will meet, I think. But for now, I'm just going to admire his works from afar. Anyways, back to the sketch. So this is where I am trying to test out if my white is going to show up in the sketch. So I am dipping my brush and wetting the white gouache as much as possible. And lo and behold, it actually does show up. So I'm really happy. It means that I've built enough layers in the background in order for the white to really show. But I know that this will not be the last time I layer in the white is because this white that I'm using is dried and therefore there's a little bit of transparency that is introduced when I do re-wet this white so I will have to go over it again in order to build up the brightness but in the meantime I can play around with the background try to add some more darker elements and 
can increase the dimension. I think my problem with watercolor, or I guess not a problem, but maybe something that I always forget with watercolor is because I know that there is no reversal, so I always try to stay light and then build up the layers. But oftentimes, I'm not brave enough to go dark, and I think that's a problem because, or maybe not a problem, but it's something that I can improve on because contrast really does make a painting. I decided that the background needed a little bit more element, mainly because I can see the ferris wheel from here, and I just thought that it was such a cute novel sight that I needed to add that in. But I know that even though the cards are bright red, I didn't want it to take too much attention away from the foreground. So I needed to desaturate these little cards on the ferris wheel as much as possible. So I added in some red blotches, just some little marks to suggest that there are cards back there. And then I even went over it with some of the bright blue sky to mute the colors even further to indicate the windows. And from afar, even though this is literally just blobs and marks, you can tell that it's a ferris wheel, so I'm really happy with that. Lastly, I wanted the fountain to pop up even more, and also because I noticed that from what I'm seeing in front of me, that the brightest area of the water reflection is surrounding the fountain. So I'm trying to increase some of the blues, the dark blues that surround this sketch, and add that in. Also in that same horizontal sweeping motion to keep with the characteristic of the water. And we are done sketching for the day. Thank you guys so much for joining me on my journey once again. I hope you guys have a great week. Take care and happy sketching. Bye, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.